thank you all for coming. We're, we're AAP ambassadors here. Um, my name is Alp. Uh, I'm a fifth year architecture student from just outside of DC in Alexandria, Virginia, but I'm also from Turkey. Um, yeah, so Maddie. Uh, my name is Maddie. I'm a fourth year architecture student uh, and I'm from Philadelphia. Um, Dylan, you wanna go next? <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Dylan. I'm a senior fine arts major and I'm from Los Angeles, California. Um, Adam? You want to yeah, hey everybody. Uh, I'm Adam. I'm from Shushan, New York in upstate. Uh, I am a third year fine arts and performing and media arts concurrent degree student within arts and sciences and AAP. And hey, Jack. <laughs> yeah, hi everyone. I'm Jack. I'm a second year student uh, from Evanston, Illinois, writes outside of Chicago, and I'm studying urban and regional studies within AAP. Well, it's great to see you all. Um, I guess our first question is going to be, why did you choose Cornell? Or may maybe more specifically, why did you choose AAP? Um, do Jack, do you want to start? Yeah, I'm happy to start. Uh, so yeah, I can start kind of with the first part, why Cornell? Um, or perhaps with both because it's very similar for me. Um, being an urban planning student, there aren't a whole lot of undergraduate urban planning programs uh, nationwide. If you're you know, interested in the field yourself, perhaps you might have stumbled across that. Um, so when I started to look at, at some of the uh, urban planning programs that existed, I was also quite interested kind of going uh, to the Northeast for school as someone from the Midwest. Um, my list narrowed pretty quickly. And, uh, and ultimately, once I visited Cornell, I kind of fell in love with the just kind of the academic nature uh, and, and aura that I felt right on campus. It was very much um, like I, I felt like kind of everyone there was, was similar in that way, in that focus. Um, and then meeting with folks, um, with professors uh, in, in AAP and in the Urban and Regional Studies program, um, I just felt like my interests kind of aligned really well uh, with the school um, and ultimately, you know, couldn't, couldn't turn down the opportunity. So what initially drew me to Cornell um, was sort of the architecture program um, and it's sort of rankings, but I very quickly realized that there's much more to the program and to the school um, than sort of those rankings. And the relationships that I saw when I visited between faculty and students um, was very impressive. And everyone seemed very invested in the projects that they were working on um, and the amount of one-on-one -on -one time that students have with faculty was just really enticing. Um, and in addition to that, I was very impressed by um, the architecture program's retention rate. Um, a lot of similar programs start with a much bigger class and um, lose up to like half of their students. Um, and the Cornell program only loses about five, up to five students per year um, out of 60. And I really wanted a program that wanted me to succeed and that was invested in me succeeding. Um, I didn't want to be weeded out. I wasn't looking for a program that was going to try and weed me out. Um, and that was very comforting and um, important to me uh, when deciding where to go. Yeah, if I could just build on that, I think Maddie's and my kind of reasons why choosing AAP and choosing Cornell are quite similar, actually. For me, it was I I went to um, a high school where my my graduating class was 97 students, and so it was a really small kind of high school high school um, experience. And coming to Cornell and seeing and learning that each class is just about 60 students um, made me think, okay, yeah, this is going to be a lot like my high school, where I'm going to know almost everyone, and it's going to be this kind of real kind of uh, community that we're going to build just the 60 of us, you know? Um, and that's really what it ended up being. And that's uh, that was my main reason why I chose uh, AAP. I think another reason why I really liked Cornell in general was again, because of its similarity to my high school, I guess. I mean, my high school was in this kind of wooded campus. And I mean, Cornell is beautiful and amazing and how much it's situated in nature. I mean, there are these beautiful gorges and 
uh, trails and pathways and everything around just like going through campus even. Um, and so all of these kind of similarities to what I was used to, I think eventually drew me uh, to Cornell. Building off of what Alp said, Cornell was the largest school that I applied to. Um, and I was really impressed by the small community of AAP within a larger university. So you sort of get the best of both worlds um, of sort of the resources of a large campus um, and the campus life and the college town, um, but also sort of the close knit community of AAP um, has sort of the benefits of a small college. That was a huge um, deciding factor for me as well. Um, I specifically like didn't want to go to just an art school um, because I was worried that I would miss out on like the university experience. So you really do get the best of both worlds at Cornell. Um, like in addition to being an art major, I'm an American studies minor in the College of Arts and Sciences. So like that's the biggest college here. We're in the smallest college here. And it's like just so amazing that I have such a tight knit like community of people within AAP and within fine art who I love so much. They become like such a big part of my family. But then at the same time, I have this greater community um, of people who like my my roommates are all doc, like they're not doctors, they're pre-med. And it's just like, it's great to just have that kind of experience and um speaking as someone like who specifically only applied to schools on the east coast because i was from um like los angeles i love it here it's stunning it's beautiful i had never seen snowfall until coming to cornell or like leaves change color during the fall and it's just i'm being so serious but it's just like it's such a gorgeous campus like i feel so lucky every single day that like i get to wake up and like walk to class in this most stunning like area of new york yeah, I was also fairly sure that I wanted to study art, but I also was pretty darn sure I wanted to make the most of these four years as an academic opportunity. Uh, and I mean, on top of that, I just I knew I wanted to breathe. I knew that the four years will get intense no matter what, and there is room to wander around. You can make this world your own um, with the facilities, which are which are very, very they're up there in the art program we can use all of the facilities of the architecture program the number one architecture program um and so fantastic uh you know, cnc routers and 3d printers and all these fantastic toys um while still having space for yourself to work uh and and i i you know i just noticed that right off the bat and that was that really caught my eye um i also remember the day that i visited cornell um it was it was a little bit stormy uh a little bit gray it was in like late november uh but i went and had uh lunch with a few students who were not just an aap they were you know one person was an art student but then she had a few of her friends around and they were from you know arts and sciences agriculture school and it was you know supposed to be a 15 minute lunch a get to know you sort of situation uh, and that sort of spun out into an hour and a half long conversation and just the sort of spontaneous uh, discussions that that have happened throughout my time here is, is really exciting. And it's it's of course, you'll meet very interesting people at all art schools, but there's some fantastically smart people here who have so much to offer. Uh, so that's why Cornell and that's why AAP within Cornell. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So. Could you guys then talk a little bit about um, specific classes and studios? What what are the what, what does that how does that work? Um, what's the workload? Um, and how, how do you manage your schedule? Um, I know, especially for art and architecture students, there's that aspect of studio as well. Just like kind of talking about workload um, and how you manage your schedule. When you are a freshman at Cornell, you must complete a freshman and a sophomore. You complete your six intro studio classes before moving on to more advanced level classes and more independent work. So the studios that we provide in fine art are photography, intro to, intro to photography, intro to drawing, painting, digital media, sculpture, and printmaking. I think there's six, I don't think I missed any. Um, and they're all fantastic and you are just going to learn how to master literally every single one of those mediums and um after you do after you take your intro level course in any of those studios then you can take an advanced um 
studio in that course. So for example, I took intro to printmaking my spring semester of my freshman year. I fell in love with it and continued to take, I guess only two, although it feels like three. I like I took, I just take so many classes there. So I took, I took two advanced printmaking classes after that. And then I also became a print monitor, which Adam is as well. Um, we both have on campus jobs um, in the print studios and we spend so much of our time there and it's just so amazing. Um, so intro to printmaking was definitely one of my favorite classes. I also loved my introduction to photography class. Um, it was amazing. I like fell in love with analog photography and it's our studio spaces are fantastic. We have the most amazing equipment. Our dark room is amazing. Our print studios are great. We offer so many different types of printmaking. Um, uh, processes and our painting studios great I, I love them all so much and Adam you can chime in and like if you have anything else to add um but yeah and then of course when you go abroad if you're Adam went to New York I went to Rome um and you take a studio in each of those places as well yeah no, I mean, something you guys could add on to that is um how you then uh, more to the workload aspect of it you know like the how do you kind of because I mean, printmaking is a lot of work too, you know, like I know I'm in printmaking right now and like painting and all those classes are a lot of work. So how do you kind of manage that with your on-campus job also, for example? Do you want to take this and then I can add on or? Yeah, sure. Um, in the new BFA curriculum, you are required to at least map out uh, your student, your fine arts requirements for your four years here. Um, and that, that helps, you know, all of my classmates as far as I can tell. Uh, as a concurrent degree student, um, which means I stay here five years, I had to develop a very, very uh, refined five-year plan uh, with all my arts and sciences and AAP requirements, um, which, in which there's still plenty of leeway. Uh, and I highly recommend that for anybody who has, you know, an hour or two and, 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 and you know, it's fantastic to look through the class roster and figure out what really what you really want to get out of your five years here so you don't or your four years here so you don't uh don't, don't miss out on any opportunities that way um other than that i just assess at the beginning of the semester there's a great ad drop period um it's fun to balance clubs and and jobs and you know there you need to come up with priorities but other than that it's it's it hasn't been difficult because both especially in the beginning there are advisors um uh they're, they're in in aap there are professors who are your advisors uh whereas in arts and sciences there are deans um and uh they you know they, they help you along through it <laughs> um i don't know just thinking back to what dylan said one way that aap has it's definitely impressed me uh, is that uh they have managed to create a few courses to accommodate for this covid semester um i'm taking a advanced sculpture studio online right now with a man named douglas ross and he is one of the most just it's difficult to put to words how much i appreciate this man's way of teaching like he he doesn't tell you he guides you he guides conversations toward a much much better place um and it's entirely digital but uh getting to use aap facilities getting to use the backyard outside of my off-campus you know house um has been really really smooth sailing honestly and uh that's that's been my favorite studio so far genuinely <laughs> yeah. douglas is awesome he's teaching um my senior seminar right now uh, with the rest of the art majors and we love him so much and that's also all online and it's going really well um, and I guess I understand like it's it can be tough because we are all in such creative majors that like demand that we like be in our physical like studio spaces a lot and it's uh, the question of like how to balance academics with our like like going to the library with going to studio can be tricky um and I definitely had to figure that out, but I like, like something that I decided to do like my sophomore year is like, okay, like maybe I dedicate my Fridays to going to studio. I'll dedicate my Saturdays to going to like Eurus library or something like that. Um, and just, I also, I agree with what Adam said about like speaking with our advisors has been so helpful. Like I didn't know exactly what classes I was going to take every semester, but just like planning out a decent idea of what 
you're going to take before you end up taking those classes is super, super helpful and has kept me on track um, to graduate on time and stuff, which is great. And um, I don't know what else. It's just, it's, you, you figure out how to balance it once you're here and it might seem intimidating, but it really isn't. And professors are understanding and especially like professors outside of like um, AAP when they find out that you're like an art major, at least in my experience, like people always enjoy, like I'm in this other class that I love this semester. It's called Food in America. Um, and it's for my American studies minor. And my professor loves, like I have I'm taking it along with one of my friends who's in architecture and she always like bounces things off of us. Like when we talk about like the architecture of a restaurant or we talk about like how food is incorporated into artworks and stuff. Um, so it's it's fun to be that like kind of quirkier major, I guess, in a way. Yeah, so the URS program is, is a contrast from art and architecture slightly in that there are no studios. Um, it's a little bit more broad. Um, and I suppose one can say a little more liberal artsy, but um, but it's certainly uh, very focused, right? So in terms of classes, each semester for the first five semesters um, of, a, of a URS student's uh, time at Cornell, uh, there is kind of a required uh, urban planning class um, and they've, they've just been fascinating. So I'm in my second year, um, but, but during the first year, the first semester is called the American city uh, and the second semester is the global city. So it uh, gives a pretty wide scope for planning. Um, and then from there, you know, you start to become a little more direct. And also in those classes, kind of through the intricacies, you, you, you one, if it's not already known, can, um, can kind of develop their own interests and what about planning really, um, you know, gets them. In terms of the, the making a schedule manageable, there's a, there's a couple of things. And one kind of large recommendation that I would give to any, you know, prospective students, um, take classes that you're interested in and fascinated by rather than classes that are easy because it is so much easier to actually do work that you're interested in than, you know, busy work that may not actually, you know, mean anything to you. Um, and I, I, I've certainly found that. So when it comes to electives um, within AAP, within uh, the URS program, uh, which, which URS candidates need to take a, a number of throughout their four years. It's nothing crazy, um, but, or outside uh, in the, the university itself, um, it's definitely worth taking things that, that taking classes that really interest you and, and have, in my case, interested me um, because it makes workload more manageable um, and, and makes me able to, to uh, I'm on the running club and so I can make those, uh, you know, practices and meetings certainly four or five times a week um, and, and a number of other, you know, off uh, or on and off campus opportunities, um, totally doable. Transition to architecture now. Um, Maddie, do you want to start us off and then I'll build off of whatever you say? Um, so our architecture studios are six credits. So they're almost the equivalent of two classes um, and they are generally three times a week um, from 1220 to 430. So those are sort of big chunks of time. And you will have sort of one of three um, sort of schedules, I guess, happening during your studio classes. So they're not sort of long lecture periods. Um, you will either have desk crits with your professor. So um, every year is about 60 students and they're divided into groups of 12. Um, and so, in that group of 12, you'll have one professor. So on a day where you're doing desk crits, pretty much everyone will get around 15 minutes one-on-one um, -on -one discussion with your professor, specifically talking about your project. Um, another format that's pretty common are pinups. Um, so it's sort of similar to a desk crit, but everyone is sort of watching everyone else's. So it's more of a presentation format. Sometimes you'll literally pin drawings up on the wall, or if it's virtual, you'll make a presentation. Um, and get feedback from your work. Sometimes other professors will be invited to also critique your work. Um, it's great to get other feedback. And we also have reviews. Um, so reviews are basically more formal pinups. Um, so you'll have them sort of spread out through the year and you might have one or two guest critics um, come and critique your work as well. Um, so there's, it's not really long periods of lectures or anything like that. Um, there will be days that are sort of um, 
a, a, there are a variety of things that happen um, on any given studio day. Um, and so your, your first three years are you're um, in the core studios. So basically those are all planned out for you um, and you'll be with your entire year. And then in third year, generally you go to Rome for one of the semesters um, and you can go with the art students and the planning students as well. <laughs> um, and there's also a New York City studio option once you get into fourth year. So in fourth year and fifth year, um, you have option studios. So basically professors will offer a really wide range of studios um, and you get to pick. Um, and because the professors, um, they design them every year, they change the studios every year. And they're often related to sort of professors' personal research. Um, and so they're very relevant and very exciting. Um, the studio I'm in right now is so, so wonderful. Um, and we're looking at essential workers during um, the COVID pandemic uh, in New Orleans um, and sort of talking about the spatialization of care and things like that. Um, so it has been so, so relevant. That was a great kind of rundown of what our kind of workload is. Um, schedule wise, the first two years are basically given to you. I mean, Maddie was talking about how that's all about the core education and that's when you have all of your kind of uh, required classes that you take. You have one elective option per semester um, for those uh, first two years. So in those first two years, you get a choice uh, for four classes. Everything else is given to you. Um, so your schedule is set for you for those first two years. Um, and so, of course, the department has planned it out such that it is more manageable that way. Um, and so then whatever you, you choose to take, um, maybe an in-department elective, we have great uh, professors that come in from uh, architecture professors that come in from around the world to teach these kinds of uh, electives, but then you can also take an elective outside in, for example, art history or anthropology or, I don't know, hotel school if you want, you know, like anything. Um, and those kinds of uh, things that opens up more as you go through um, the curriculum, third year, fourth year, fifth year. Um, and so then by then you're also a little bit more kind of ready and knowledgeable about how you can shape your schedule anyway. So that's kind of one of the best uh, blessings of the architecture department. It's kind of a blessing and a curse, you know, it's a double-edged sword in that you don't get that many choices in your first two years, but it's great because all of the kind of time management decisions about picking classes and making a schedule have already been done for you, you know? Um, so that's kind of the positive aspect of that. Yeah, definitely, just to add on. So in addition to your core studios, those first three years, you'll be taking sort of the other um, core architecture classes. So there's a two semester history course, a two semesters of structures, two semesters of building technology, um, two semesters of environmental systems, and two semesters of visual representation, I also think. Also theory. Oh yeah, and two semesters of theory. Um, and so basically those classes, you're all finished by your third year. Um, and then you have freedom to take whatever classes you want. Um, but just because you don't have a ton of choice your first couple of years um, doesn't mean that you don't have opportunities to take classes outside of architecture. Um, both Alp and I am minoring um, in other in other colleges. Um, I'm minoring in inequality studies, which is part of the sociology department. Um, and t there are people minor in all kinds of things, and you definitely have room in your schedule to do that. Um, and I think that that has really informed how I design and how I view architecture. Um, and I would just highly recommend people not being afraid to try and take classes outside of architecture. Um, and there are a few require requirements. Um, you do, there is like a humanities requirement um, and a few science and math requirements um, that can sort of help you take classes outside of the college if you're not really sure where to start. Uh, Great, yeah, um, I think this is a great kind of way to fly into, jump into um, 
what is um, the most interesting class that you've taken at Cornell? Another class that I absolutely loved was um, Baroque and Renaissance art and art and architecture history that I took in Rome um, with Jeffy Blanchard and it was phenomenal. Like you literally like wake up and our assignment is to like meet him at the Pantheon, which is like not Brook Renaissance, but like, or, or, um, or the Vatican or anything. And like, we just walked around Rome and looked at beautiful art and beautiful buildings. And that was class and it was fantastic. Um, and then another class that I loved um, taking, I took this um, senior seminar class um, when I was a sophomore um, on refugees. Um, it was in for my American studies minor. I took it with this woman named Maria Garcia and it was phenomenal. There were like 10 people in the class and we just learned about the history of refugees in America. Um, and it was really, really eye-opening and informative and we just had fantastic conversations. Um, so I love that class too. God, there are just so many. I've taken such great classes. Another awesome one was, and then I'll be done. Um, this class called America in the 60s and 70s. I took it with this professor named Julie Kohler Hausman. Um, and I'm fascinated by the 60s and 70s. And we just talked about as much as we could with, like, with what happened in those like two decades, um, which was great. Um, but yeah, it's really great. And just like to bounce back off of what Maddie was saying about um, having a minor, like you definitely don't need to have a minor here, but I like with the classes I wanted to take outside of fine art, it just happened that I could fulfill a minor or two. Um, and it's just like, it's a really great way. Like you're saying that your minor informs your architecture practice. My minor absolutely informs my art practice. Um, and it's, it's just a great way to get out of the college. Um, the art curriculum, as Adam was saying before, is very, very open at, in like terms of like what we need outside of like our studio and seminar classes within um, the college. Uh, so yeah, I, that's why I've just been able to take these amazing classes and I highly recommend it like Maddie. Jumping off of what Dylan was saying about um, minors. So even if you're an art major, for example, or you can take another, you can do a minor in a different uh, AAP uh, department as well. So I know a bunch of Archies who minor in URS or minor in fine arts. And I know that a bunch of URS uh, majors also minor in architecture. And you, I know even some engineering students who minor in architecture and it's all kind of reciprocal. You can kind of, uh, our college is so special that like even like engineers want to like minor in our majors, you know, because, and, um, combining our three majors in a way that you can make a major minor kind of practice that way is also uh, really interesting when people do that too. Yeah, I think bouncing off of that, but also going back to your initial question, my favorite class that I've taken um, was called Gender Architecture Intersectionality with Samia Henny, who is an absolute genius. I cannot say enough good things about her. Um, she is just has so much wisdom. Um, and that class really sort of bridged my two interests in sort of, with inequality studies, I look a lot at um, sort of intersectionality and feminist theory and things like that. Um, and sort of being able to bridge that with, through sort of an architecture lens and sort of with that framework was just mind blowing. Um, and she is absolutely fantastic. I would highly recommend anything that she teaches. <laughs> That's really interesting because my favorite class that I've taken here is also taught by Samia. Um, and it was called Wars and Built Environments, which kind of bridged, again, my interests, right? My, I, I'm double minoring. I'm minoring in European studies as well as in migration studies. Um, and so her class, Wars and Built Environments, was so interesting to bring kind of those interests that I have and combine them with architecture um, and the built environment and infrastructures. So that was definitely my favorite class. My favorite class that I've taken um, was introduction to GIS. If you're you know, interested in the urban planning field, uh, perhaps you've heard of, of GIS, which is geographic uh, information systems, I want to say. Um, and if you have not heard of it, then you'll shortly hear of it because it's kind of the, the, the most 
the tool most frequently used within the field. Um, and essentially it's mapping. It's mapping on, on computers and mapping um, you know, various spatial areas. And so uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but as far as internships um, and, and career opportunities go, um, for me, having having learned GIS uh, just on a you know a very introductory uh, level through that class has has really opened doors for me as far as getting uh, opportunities to intern uh, within the field. Uh, so that class is was was fantastic. Um, and additionally, kind of one other thing, um, I'm also kind of pursuing a, a minor in Spanish, and the language is. I suppose, program or, or just the languages that are offered at Cornell uh, and the classes that accompany them are, are terrific. They don't even resemble kind of the, the, the classes that I took on a high school level, which I also really enjoyed. Um, they're, they're so fantastic. So uh, kind of the intermediate and, and more advanced classes uh, within Spanish, and I'm sure is the case for you know, the, the dozen plus other languages that are offered at Cornell um, are, are terrific. I think this is a great time to jump into then internships, the internship question. So have you done any internships? And maybe Jack, you can start by talking about it and then we'll move on to the, everyone else too. Um, have, so have you done any internships? What kinds of internships have you done? And what has that added to your experience, uh, to your academic experience? Definitely, Alp. So uh, this past summer, um, I, I interned with the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, uh, which is a long name for Chicago's largest kind of planning agency uh, in the city and the, the metro area. Um, and I was very much like, you know, after my freshman year, I, kind of the lowest on the totem pole of people within the group, but yet such a great opportunity and experience. Um, so as I was mentioning briefly earlier, uh, I've, I've used, a, a lot of GIS that I really learned in class, um, which is really cool to see it play out. And um, again, be like, you know, I did assignments and projects and, and so much using this tool. And now I can um, affect my city, uh, Chicago, by, by using it uh, and, you know, doing analysis and things like that. Myself, weird anecdote, and, and it's really only given the year 2020. Um, but I'm actually, uh, I've, I've been able to continue that internship through the fall, um, which, you know, I, I would not be able to attribute uh, that, you know, without thanking Cornell and AAP uh, and, and specifically that class. Um, so I suppose AAP sets you up really, really well to, to do certain things like that uh, because I've been really, really fortunate. That's great. Yeah, I'm also actually interested in Adam, uh, how you kind of bring both of your majors, right, your 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 current degree way of thinking into kind of this more any professional experience or things that you may have done. Like it's it, because it's a it's it's your you're kind of not just thinking art wise, but you're also like bringing in that other kind of. Uh, mindset into it. I, I'm, I'm wondering if you have any kind of anecdotes about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I was able to put both of my interests, well, I have many more than two interests, but my two concentrations uh, to use this summer because I was back home uh, and uh, the summer programs uh, for children in the area were all canceled. They hadn't seen each other in, in months. Uh, and uh, I was given the opportunity to create a summer program in filmmaking, photography, art making, and social justice at a local community center. Uh, and I received uh, funding from Cornell uh, as well as from New York State and some other sources to put together this program. Um, obviously, this is not a formal internship, but uh, I was encouraged. You know, I, I just felt uh, that it was the right, the right direction to go to to take my current knowledge of filmmaking. Um, and of course, performance is built into that uh, and 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 present it in a way that I could help, at least help out as much as I can uh, in, in my little community uh, in New York. Um, outside of that, uh, I've been very lucky to meet um, through classes and professors. For instance, there's one class called 
on the fringe, uh, new plays in development, um, contemporary playwrights, we read their unpublished plays and then we get to meet them. Um, and I was able to, and, 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 and in person, and then, you know, later in the semester, this was last semester, and uh, we, uh, we, we had, you know, long conversations over Zoom, um, and that allowed us to continue um, our, our, our discussions throughout the summer. And so again, this is not a formal internship, but I was able to keep in correspondence with very well established playwrights in New York City um discussing both their work how one might produce it um potential futures there and i'm going to continue the, down those avenues um i found i've been finding the concurrent uh concentrations uh i mean they they influence themselves in in you know ways beyond i can beyond i can really express because uh readings and, and experience and just methods of looking at the world always, always benefit each other. And uh, I know that I've brought both, you know, senses of design and of performance to productions I've done outside of Cornell. Um, over the summer, I was in outdoor Shakespeare production, and I was able to both, you know, contribute to design and uh, perform as one of the leading roles. And it just felt great to sort of feel things, feel the two sides just come together. And so it happens naturally. <laughs> yeah. Nani, maybe want to, and do you want to talk about um, architecture internships? I have had two internships um, at this point. Um, I sort of interned at um, sort of a small firm in my area um, around near my house. Um, and then I also had sort of an incredible opportunity to intern at a firm in Vancouver um, with actually a Cornell alum, um, and Cornell has a huge network of alumni who are so, so excited and willing to talk to students and um, sort of offer positions if they are able to. Um, and I know a lot of students have really utilized um, the resources that we have um, with those alumni networks. Um, and that was sort of a larger firm um, where I just met so many incredible people and yeah, I really credit sort of that Cornell connection um, with that internship. Great. So maybe as a kind of last question, what career opportunities then are there available for undergraduate students at Cornell's uh, at AAP? Well, I mean, like how, how do you kind of see yourself kind of um, finding a career from your major, right? And are there any ways that uh, AAP helps uh, you find your kind of path that you wanna take in the future? Um, I know that Dylan and I are both graduating this year. So maybe this is more apt for us um, that we're thinking about this a little bit more. But um, so then maybe, yeah, Dylan, do you wanna start about maybe how you're thinking about this? Um, absolutely. Uh, kind of, okay, so I plan on going to law school after finishing um, my undergrad at Cornell, not immediately. Um, I plan on probably spending a year um, working in New York City and then um, going the year after. Um, and whenever I tell people that they're just like, oh my gosh, like, why are you an art student? That makes no sense, law school. But like, in a very strange way, like, my major and like how I've chosen to make the kinds of work that I do has absolutely like informed what I want to do with the rest of my life. And like, it gives me a different way of thinking about the law and thinking about politics and thinking about our world and just being able to express that artistically has been like so awesome. Um, and I've like kind of been like, and I, I'm still not like 100% sold on whether or not I wanna go to law school, but I almost, pretty much am and I've been like fighting that like like will I won't I go for a while um and I'm still not 100% sure on like what my career path like has for me but I specifically remember like the first like our very first day at, like as I when I was a freshman at Cornell like I remember my um 
my one of our professors, uh, this woman named Renee Farrow, she like was telling us about all the different avenues that students have taken. And then she was like, one girl last year went to law school. And I was like, oh, well, that could be me in four years. And so like, it kind of is. Um, and everyone here is super supportive. My professors, like, especially like my, um, in my uh, thesis studio right now, I have a lot of conversations with um, my two professors and my TA and they're just like so encouraging of the art that I make and like what I want to do like post-graduation um so yeah I don't know if that's if there's anything else I should add but yeah yeah that's great that's so interesting um yeah I mean for me I guess um what I'm thinking about is I'm definitely going to so at AAP we have um AAP Connect which is this great service we have um three, four amazing people who work there that are really helpful with trying to find internships as well as jobs. There are multiple kind of events that they put on in both semesters, like portfolio days and like critiques of portfolios and things that get us ready for um, job applications um, and internship applications. And so I'm definitely going to go to them because I mean, when I graduate, I think I want to work maybe for a year or two uh, but then I definitely see myself going back to um, school, to grad school and getting um, some type of master in design uh, or some type of theory and history based thing. Um, that's kind of really what I'm really interested in. Um, and so I definitely, for me at least, I think I'm definitely going to go to AAP Connect, um, get some help from them to find a job, work there, get some real experience real life experience and then go to grad school yeah um are any of you guys thinking about those kinds of things um i was just gonna say i think it's also really i don't know really exciting um that because the cornell program is an accredited BARC program um after those five years you don't need grad school um to practice and to become licensed um, so that's a huge bonus. Um, it saves a lot of money um, and time. Um, and just it sort of fast tracks you um, to working, um, which is really convenient and awesome if you, you know, if you know what you want to, if you know that this is what you're interested in, um, it's totally worthwhile. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. There are definitely architecture students who are interested in going to grad school, but there are also a lot of people um, who aren't. Um, and there's a lot of sort of range of what people do um, with an architecture degree. It's not necessarily all people practicing in firms um, in cities. Um, I have a friend who's really interested in set design um, and she's sort of looking into jobs. She's also graduating this year, um, looking into jobs related to that. Um, people um, go sort of more of a graphic design route. Um, people go more of an engineering route. People do all kinds of things. Um, and an architecture degree really sets you up to um, be a really great problem solver. I think that's like a huge part of our education is um, design as sort of problem solving. And that's really applicable to so many um, career op options. Um, and yeah, it's not everyone doesn't immediately go practice after graduating um but a lot but some people do <laughs> that's what i plan to do so i don't know um really quick i think uh what maddie just said also applies definitely to um my major as well i was just thinking about like all my other friends and like what we want to do and like just because we are fine art majors does not mean that we're going to go practice art like a lot of people do that and that's great but like a few of my best friends one of them is gonna um apply to some animation programs post graduation one of my friends is applying to like uh get her master's in art history and curation um, another one of my friends is like going into advertisement um, because she's really great at those drawings and whatnot. Um, so there's just like a lot that you can do like and so many different avenues that you can go down. Um, and I just thought of that as you were speaking. So yeah. To add to that, uh, I do want to acknowledge that uh, regardless of professional direction, uh, Cornell is a need blind school, and so it will try to alleviate uh, the financial burden of the education uh, for those who need it. Um, as the son of two musicians, uh, 
I'm extremely grateful to have the support that Cornell gives me, which will, uh, it'll, it'll make the next years after a lot easier instead of having to scr struggle to climb back out of the financial, you know, hole. Um, Cornell provides the financial support uh, needed to, to make a comfortable life after school. Uh, and so grad school, professional life, no matter what, um, you'll be coming out, you know, in, in pretty decent shape, I think. And finally, in terms of uh, kind of a, as a planner, um, I can speak to, I had mentioned previously that, uh, that the, the program itself is very broad. I would, I would also add that the career outcomes are incredibly broad. Um, you know, we hear it all the time, but, but like Dylan, there are uh, a number of pre-law students uh, and candidates uh, in the URS program. There are people who go and work uh, for environment, environmental agencies um, because they, you know, are, are really fascinated by the intersection of, you know, the environment and planning, which is a large part of planning. Um, people who will pursue architecture or, or civil engineering or, or things like that. Um, I want to be a master planner. I want to, whether it be for, for a major city uh, in the public sector uh, or a, a large group or, or, uh, or planning firm, excuse me, in a major metropolitan city, um, I am fascinated particularly by transportation and public transportation, and I want to make that better uh, for a place. So certainly ambitious, but, but that is, uh, my, my goal, uh, after Cornell and, and that will likely take graduate school, but I feel, you know, incredibly hopefully set up, um, because of the education that, that I am receiving, um, and to Alp's point, also the, the resources of AAP connect that I cannot understate, um, how helpful they've been already in my second year. Um, so certainly a lot of potential, opportunities. Um, and I would also, you know, if you're interested in any of that, um, take a look at, at urban planning because it is a booming field. Great. Well, um, thank you all for um, your great insights. Thank you for sharing your time as well as your stories and your anecdotes. Um, I think this was a great kind of conversation between us ambassadors here. Um, and uh, have a great day. Thank you to everyone who watched as well.